Good evening. I'd like to call the January 7, 2019 meeting of the University Heights City Council to order. Mrs. Thomas, will you call the roll? Mr. Rock? Here. Mr. Weisman? Here. Mr. Sims? Here. Mrs. Pardee? Here. Mr. Erdl? Here. Mrs. Cameron? Present. Mrs. Wise? Here. Will all those who are able please rise for the Pledge of Allegiance? I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. First item of business is approval of minutes. Uh, does anybody have a motion? Mrs. Pardee. I actually have a couple of corrections. Okay, very good. On page three in the very last paragraph, in the very last sentence, then next year council will be on the regular schedule in January and the next appointed vice mayor, that's elected vice mayor, will go ahead and recommend new council persons to the various boards and commissions since they are approved by council. And then on page six, just for um, understanding the minutes better on page six of eight, under the building commissioners report about six lines down, the line starts, one of which was the approval of new signs for the McDonald's drive through the signs will be LED type. I think you'd want to capitalize that because otherwise it just looks like lead type. So thank you. And that was all I had. Very good. Are there any other corrections to the minutes? And I'll move approval of the minutes. Now. Okay, very good. There's a motion by Mrs. Pardee to approve the minutes as corrected. Is there a second? Second. Okay, second by Mrs. Cameron. Is there any discussion? Seeing no discussion, Mrs. Thomas, will you call the roll? Mr. Rock? Aye. Mr. Wiseman? Aye. Mr. Sims? Aye. No, I passed. Pass? Okay. I, wasn't, I wasn't there. <laughs> Very good. Mrs. Pardee? Aye. Mr. Erdl? Aye. Mrs. Cameron? Aye. Mrs. Wise? Aye. Very good. <laughs> Motion carries and those minutes are approved. Uh, normally next would be the comments from the audience, but we're going to take one matter out of order. Uh, we have a, 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 an announcement to make, a very important major announcement, and that announcement is the results of the University Heights Name That Chicken contest. <laughs> Yay! Right. Now, there were many proposed names submitted, names like Patty, Tender, Nugget, Curry, Piccata, Cordon Bleu, Extra Crispy, Marcel, and Lincoln Park. I don't know what that last one means. But these delectable names were all submitted by adults and thankfully were not valid entries in the contest. <laughs> As we only accepted entries on behalf of children. So there is one winning name, but two winning entrants as two children nearly simultaneously submitted the same winning name. So, it is my honor to announce that the winning name is... <laughs> Cooper. 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 Cooper is the name of the University Heights Chicken. And, right. and we have with us today Claire Connor. Claire? Dolan, excuse me, Claire Dolan, all right, and and Jackson Lovato, all right, all right, who both provided the winning entry. Now I understand Claire is here with her mom Christy and some other members of the family, okay, and Jackson's here with mom Lisa, and and and, and brother Peyton, right. Now I understand that that Peyton submitted also a very good name, Ken for chicken <laughs> and, and it has some merit but there can only be one winning name and Cooper is it so All right. so we have we have a couple of goodie bags for our winner oh, All right. oh great <laughs> Thank you.
So if uh, Claire and Jackson can come up, Claire, uh, congratulations. You'll see that you have many wonderful university nights, including, including your very own group of the chicken. <laughs> from the audience. Uh, speakers are limited to five minutes. Total time allowed is 15 minutes. We can be a little flexible with that, but, but uh, we do try to keep it to five. If anybody here would like to address the city, uh, please do so at this time. It looks like uh, Ms. Euler is on her way up, so we'll go first with your, if you could state your name and address for the record, please, speak yes, into the microphone. My, my name is Kate Euler. I live on Fenwick Road. Lived in University Heights since 1964. I have a couple of things. I, I was uh, I I perused the ba the budget that I got uh, shortly after Christmas, and uh, <clears throat> there are some discrepancies. But uh, the one that I'm the most concerned about is uh, there was on page two. There is an acknowledgement of the. 3.4 million dollar surplus that was in the budget when you inherited 3.401,091 dollars was the surplus. And on page uh, six, the expenses increased 2,276,496 dollars, almost 2.3 million dollars increase over the 2017, uh, 2018 increase. Um, I am assuming that all council passed the budget that I had. That's true? So all of you read the budget? You read the budget? Well, it's a rhetorical question, but Mr. Sims, your, your background, you have a background in finance. And Mr. Ertl, you have been with the city at, uh, uh, working with Beryl Rothschild for a long time. And you know that Mayor Rothschild was very careful with the taxpayer money. So that to, to okay a $2.3 million surplus expenses increased in spite of the fact that there was a $3.4 million surplus that was, that was in <coughs> January of 2018 to okay $2 $276,000 more, you both know that Mayor Rothschild would be profoundly hurt by that. I, 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 I think it's egregious. And you should both be ashamed of yourselves because she was so careful with the budget of University Heights and the taxpayer funds. Now I wonder, we have $2.3 million more that was spent. Um, I, I wonder which streets are going to be paved in gold? 
Uh, I have a new FOIA request which I'm going to give to Kelly Thomas. Mrs. Thomas took the last one and she did a lot of work for me with that. A lot of people did a lot of work on that FOIA request, well, not just Mrs. I, Thomas. Well, I filed FOIA requests mm -hmm. with the state of Ohio. I would file a FOIA request at 10 o'clock in the morning and I'd pick it up the next day at 4 o'clock. I, I filed FOIA requests for, for my clients many times, many times. So mm -hmm. I know what kind of work is in. Scott Gaynor had information for me in a week on the whole um, CHUH school system. So the, um, we responded the within the legal request. time allowed by statute. So Pardon me? We did respond within the appropriate time allowed by statute. Oh, yeah. All right. All right. So we want the year-end actual budget expenses from the 2018 budget, 2018 budget. We want the actual expenditures. And this was, that's what you said you were going to spend. We want to find out what you actually spent. So that's the FOIA request that I have at this time that I'm giving to Kelly Thomas. Thank you. And we, we will not wait three months for it. We will, we will not wait three months for it. We want it as quickly as possible. Well, we haven't closed out the books yet for last year, so uh, we won't be able well, they, to do that until then. Uh, it's my understanding that the books are closed by the end of the year. The financials should be available by the first of the year. The expenses should be available by the first of the year. Is that right, Mr. Sims? I'm, I'm sorry. I, I just have to ask. It, it, public comment is one thing. Spirited debate with questions and name calling is another thing. So if Ms. Euler has a comment, I'd love to hear it. But excuse I don't me, sir. I have it. First Amendment rights to speak, and I haven't called anybody a name. Again, I'm, I'm interested in hearing public comment, but I don't think we should engage in a debate at this point. It's not really going to serve. I, I don't purpose. expect any answers from any of you except the except the uh, FOIA request. I, I am okay. stating by with my First Amendment rights that I have a right to speak. Okay. Thank you. I, do, I have a question. Thank you, Ms. Euler. Uh, Mr. Sims, you may have the floor. Uh, Ms. Euler, before you sit, I wanted to make sure that I understood um, which budget you're referring to. And 2018. Okay, the so, date, the date so, is, uh, so the date is December 20, 2018. It's December 20th, 2018. 20. So, so is that the 2019? I don't know budget? what she's looking at. Okay, we because I, passed 2019. Yeah, we haven't passed the 2019 budget at this point. And, and well, I, no, I, I have the date here is. Uh, it's a 2018 budget. And expenditures. Uh, John, you want to know how we spent all the money that we did in the final. 2018 budget final. Uh, 2018 budget final. Cover sheet is 327, March 27, 2018. Oh, okay. Now, I do okay. know that the budget was changed a few times. Mm -hmm. Right. But this says uh, 3 20 20 28, 2018 budget. So I, I, I'm, I'm hoping that you're not planning to pay the street in gold with the excess money. So I'm just looking for the amount of money that was the, this, the uh, city spent to operate the city of University Heights. And the FOIA request states that clearly. And I have filed many FOIA requests. <clears throat> Thank you. Okay. Thank you. Is there anyone else who would like to address the city? And please come on up. Uh, if you will state your name into the microphone and address, and please speak into the microphone because you are being recorded. It helps us out with the minutes. Uh, thank you, Mayor Brennan, <clears throat> members of council, uh, for affording me the opportunity to speak this evening. My name is Mark Schuldhaus. I'm here on behalf of Rock on Cleveland Opportunity Fund Number 2, LLC. We are the owners of Waterstone Medical Center, which is located on Cedar Road, just to the east of University Square. Uh, one of my partners, Ned Wasserstein, is also here. And uh, when I'm complete with my comments, I'd like to yield the floor to Ned for a few more comments, if that's OK. Uh, as many of you know, <clears throat> the Waterstone Medical Center has been a significant commercial building in the city for over 40 years and continues to provide first-rate medical and commercial office space to healthcare professionals and others serving the residents of University Heights and the surrounding communities. 
Our group acquired this 40,000 square foot building almost a year and a half ago from a family partnership of which Mr. Wasserstein was also a partner. We have continued the effective stewardship of this building, investing over $50,000 in improvements and upgrades, including the renovation of the lobby, the repainting of common areas, the repairing, sealing, and striping of the parking lots. We are committed to continue responsive and proactive management and are working very hard to be a good corporate citizen. Unfortunately, we are definitely and profoundly being affected by the present status and condition of the University Square property and believe that it has significantly contributed to a dramatic decrease in our building's occupancy levels, which has challenged our group financially. In the past year, we have lost several long-term tenants whose practices have significantly suffered uh, because of the specter of a large failed shopping complex next door and the negative effect it has on the community at large. This has prompted them to relocate to areas where commercial activity is more robust and the neighborhood outlook is more positive. Our real estate broker has been frustrated by a lack of interest in leasing at Waterstone and attributes this to the effect of a largely shuttered and inactive shopping center next door uh, and the effect it has on the public at large. We're projected to lose thousands of dollars in the coming years unless some tangible changes come to University Square. And we're well aware of the initiatives of the city in attempting uh, a turnaround for the complex, and we're not unsympathetic to your challenges as well. We know that whatever is ultimately decided there, it will take a number of years to see real change. And in the meantime, we cannot allow our investment to languish and fail as well. We come to you tonight to request several things that we believe might help us. Uh, we, uh, they are in no particular order. Uh, revising the side, sign ordinances to permit a digital electronic signage for our building. Addressing the rather large monument sign located between our building and University Square, which by the way is not lit and it's, it's really uh, an eyesore and considering an entranceway from Miramar into our property. Digital signage is being approved across the greater Cleveland area as well as across the country. It will permit us to better promote our tenants while giving a modern and updated appearance to the building. <coughs> we understand that the city has begun to think about permitting such signage. We hope that we can count on council approving this going forward. The 30-foot monument sign at the entrance to both our building and the shopping complex blocks our building's visibility from eastbound traffic adds significantly to customer confusion and considering the state of affairs at University Square provides little value at the far eastern end of the complex. Ned has told me that original plans for this monstrosity were never intended for its present placement between our buildings. Removal of this sign or at the very least reducing it in size would greatly enhance the line of sight for visitors to our building and would improve access to our driveway entrances and exits. Lastly, a new entrance way from Miramar will streamline and reduce traffic turning off Cedar Road and provide a safer alternative, particularly if and when redevelopment of University Square begins. All of these proposals we believe will enhance the neighborhood, help our building to stay competitive, and benefit the citizens of University Heights in the coming months and years as you find a solution to a very complex problem at University Square. We're prepared to discuss the foregoing with you at any time and we'll continue to work hard to keep Waterstone Medical Center a quality office building that will serve the city and its citizens for years to come. We hope we can count on your continued cooperation and you can count on ours. Thank you for your attention and allowing me to at the time to address you tonight. I now yield the floor, if I could, to Ned Wasserstein. Uh, sure, thank you, Mr. Shieldhouse. And, and uh, Ned, Mr. Wa uh, we're, we're going to count this as another five minutes, so, you know, because uh, Mr. Shieldhouse Used most of his five, so please Thank go ahead. Thank you, Mayor Brennan and honorable members of council. I wanted to follow up with my partner, Mark Shieldhouse, regarding what he has already mentioned. Prior to Mark getting involved, I was the managing partner of the Waterstone Medical Center, and I experienced the demolition of the former May company Kaufman's, as well as the development of University Square. While demolishing May Company and developing University Square, there were minimum four times the access road was shut down for one or more days. 
It prevented my tenants from seeing their patients. <clears throat> yes, patients could park across the street in my professional building. Unfor unfortunately, the rheumatologist we had and the urologist in my building could not see their patients. Uh, we also had experienced during this demolition process, we also experienced a ruptured fire line that not only caused the entire parking lot to buckle, as of today, that fire line is still ruptured. The fire department allowed, at what we're saying, Target to ignore it. They said they have enough water in case of a fire. My fear is because it's a ruptured line, if somebody accidentally turns it on, it'll be our property that gets injured again. Um, it took a while for that lot to be fixed, which caused a tremendous amount of inconvenience for my tenants and their guests. That's one of the reasons why I want to have access to Miramar. I understood why the mayor was against it at the time, but Wiley, from what I'm understanding, is going to move, number one. And number two, we're not asking for access today. We want to be able to have access in case there is development at University Square one way or another. We realize what development does to us. I have worked very hard at filling up the medical center. Unfortunately, with University Square's fa uh, failing and it stopped maintaining its appearance, its failure and lack of maintenance we really have lost about 30% of our quality tenants. Got to tell you, tomorrow I sign a check for $80,000 for property taxes, which I don't have a problem with. But this time, the money has to come from Mark and me, a certain amount of it, because we are no longer bringing in tenants. Uh, the original drawings with, uh, will show that the low monument sign that is located at Applebee's was supposed to be next to my building. Instead, the pylon sign, and the pylon sign was supposed to be where Applebee's is at. Somehow or another, and without my approval, and I do have say so considering I control the egress on that property, uh, they just swapped it. And when I contacted the city about it, this would have been with Bill Nat, I was a great guy. But they basically, the city got bullied, is what it came down to. It was a big project, and they allowed University Square to do whatever it wanted to do, mm. including what I believe uh, uh, the city still allows them to do whatever they want to do. The result of putting on that uh, uh, pylon sign was the view of the Waterstone Medical Center is completely blocked by the sign, which right now they no longer maintain, and it now looks like an abandoned property, including mismatched panels. Uh, this clearly hurts our property, and honestly, it's bad for the city too. I don't understand why the city doesn't demolish it. Uh, if you ever take a look at some of your traffic, you will actually see there has been so many n close accidents there because people would turn in the wrong directions, and I was the one that finally put the signs that it said, and re-exit. Um, in today's competitive market, doctors and independent physicians are looking for property which offers signage. We want to be able to offer prospective tenants digital signage, meaning that I will have a doctor's name, let's say for 15 minutes, it'll roll to another doctor's name. It's not about advertising or good luck. It's about basically having a sign that people can actually see. As far as I'm concerned, I've never, ever benefited from University Square. Actually, it has always been a hindrance to Waterstone Medical Center from increased property taxes to non-maintenance of issues. From day one, it's been a failure, and by us being its closest neighbor, we are only hurt by it. What was agreed upon, such as maintaining the landscaping on both sides of the entry exit way, or cleaning the sidewalks, or maintaining the access road, does not exist. We have done landscaping on both sides. 
We have made repairs to the access road, as well as installing some directional signage, which I mentioned before. The city does nothing about the ugliness of the pylon sign, including forcing them to keep it maintained with matching panels or keep the building and signs lit up. If you go past University Square tonight, you're gonna to see that it's just a blotch of different lights. Um, the only thing we can do is request that the city consider allowing us the ability to install a digital sign so we can advertise the various tenants in our building. This includes Huntington Bank and other professionals. And again, allow us Miramar Road access if need be. The reality of this is, is that if the city does not help us in some way, and I'm not asking for money, I'm not asking for anything unreasonable, you, uh, we're gonna be forced not to continue working with quality tenants, but we may have to start accepting anyone that uh, uh, to come in there, and I really don't wanna do that. Thank you. Uh, Mr. Wasserstein, do you do you have plans drawn up for a digital sign or plans drawn up for an entrance on Miramar? Uh, no, we haven't done anything. This was the very first step because okay. we knew that uh, mm -hmm. with the previous mayor, and I don't like saying it because you're the mayor now. That's no, okay. Um, she was dead set against Miramar, mm -hmm. and at that time, we had our neighbor and us that would have been willing to do it. I can definitely start working on getting plans for both of those things. I just don't want to waste, honestly, uh, a sign company's time because everybody knows that, that University Heights doesn't allow it. So I want to be able to have some sort of ability to say they may be if we can put it together. Okay. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. <clears throat> Very good. Is there anyone else who would care to do address the city at this time? Yes, uh, Mrs. Hubman. <laughs> Hello, my name is Sheila Hubman. My husband and I live on Ashurst Road. I think the council might have an idea what I'm bringing up. I was in this building. I walked in with Mr. McConville at about 10 to 7. I arrived at this room at 7.20. After a most ungraceful ride up the stairs, on the fireman's cart. I'm thankful they are very, very pleasant. Again, I'm going to say I'm always treated with such respect and I'm pleasant. But I actually was given a date. I have been in and out of the hospital again and um, so I haven't followed up. But I was given a specific install date, which I don't have my notes with me, I believe was in November. So before this evening is over, if we could discuss what the mix-up was, why, it's been months. The last time I came, I had to crawl down the stairs. Again, a little ungraceful. I enjoy coming to these meetings, and for you new people, it's 10 years. I've been coming for 10 years. It started in September of eight over a fence that John Carroll wanted and the neighbors didn't. And I've been coming on and off when I'm well for 10 years and I would like to come back. I don't wanna ride on the chair, on the fireman's chair. Thank you. Are there any more agendas? Thank you, Mrs. Hubner. Is there anyone else who would like to address the city at this time? Very well. Uh, seeing no further comments, uh, we will move on to the next item of the agenda, which is reports and communications from the mayor and the taking of action. 
All right. Well, one year and about seven days, well, no, four days ago, I presided over my first city council meeting as your mayor. And in the last year, no day has ever been routine. Every day has brought new challenges and new opportunities and new insights. We got a lot done in 2018, but there's still a lot more to come. And I will be reporting to the people of University Heights at my first, at my first State of the City address on February 13th, 2019 at 7 p.m. at the Jardine <coughs> Room at John Carroll University. And because I'll re be reporting to you then, you'll all be relieved from getting a blow by blow now. But let's talk about the leaves. As of yesterday, Sunday, January 6, 2019, the 2018 leaf collection season, at least using the leaf crews, has reached a conclusion. Thank you. I've been reviewing the process from this year, what's worked, what hasn't worked, and what, uh, and what that we'll be implementing some uh, changes with respect to staffing uh, regard, and with regard to temporarily banning street parking on streets where our crews are projected to be to allow them the room to work and to help prevent people from being skipped. And uh, as far as reversing the effects of global warming, we'll get on that too so that the leaves come down in an orderly fashion. So except for that last thing, uh, there are some measures that this administration is considering. Uh, two weeks from tonight is Martin Luther King Jr. Day. And in celebration and in honor of Dr. King's memory, I've invited children of all ages living in or attending school in University Heights to enter an essay contest in celebration of Dr. Martin Luther King Jr.'s 90th birthday. Dr. King's message remains important today as we are still striving to make his dream a reality. It will soon be the responsibility of a new generation to further implement Dr. King's vision and goals. Participants are asked to respond to the question, or the yeah, question below in 500 words or less. What do the words of Martin Luther King Jr. mean to you and how do they apply to the world today? Award winners will be invited to City Hall for an awards presentation. One winner will be chosen per participating school, public, private, or homeschoolers as a whole. Submissions may be sent to City Hall or email to info at universityheights.com. They should include the school and the grade of the student. Essays must be received by Tuesday, January 15, 2019 at 4.30 p.m. Some upcoming meetings here at the city. Our city CIC will be having its first meeting tomorrow evening at 6 p.m. at the conference room. The Memorial Day Parade Committee will be having its first organizational meeting tomorrow night at 7 p.m. here in council chambers. The Citizens Committee on Parks and Recreation will meet on Tuesday, January 22nd at 6.30 p.m. here at City Hall. Agenda items will include potential improvements to the community park and the potential installation of a seasonal ice rink. Thank you. This concludes my report, but I would like to add with respect to the matter brought up in Mrs. Hub, and I believe Mr. Chuni, will we be able to discuss that some in your report later this evening? Yes. Very good. So we will talk about the, do, can you wait that long or should we okay. jump in? Okay. Okay. Well, you know what, just, just to be sure that we get there, Mr. I'm sorry. I was going to yeah. say yes, do it now. Yes, yes. Uh, Mr. Chuney, I'd like to yield the floor to you to talk about where we are on the chairlift project. Yes, uh, thank you, Mayor. We did accept bids uh, back in uh, November for the uh, chairlift. We only got one bid. So we decided to go out for bids again um, to see what else was out there. And uh, I contacted, I personally contacted 10 different contractors, gave them the specs, gave them the, uh, the uh, uh, legal notice and told them about the project. Uh, we received only one bid again. Um, it was on December 21st. And uh, I am in the process of talking to the contractors who did not bid to ask them why. Uh, I did receive one response back from Gable Elevator. <coughs> Gable Elevator uh, also does chairlifts. Uh, gave us the original price of like $52,000 way back in July, you know, mm -hmm. and then we decided it was, we were going to go out for bids for this. Uh, and uh, they refused to bid at both times, and they have several reasons why. Um, and it has to do with the angles and the, uh, and the turns and the, uh, the headroom and all the things. They don't want to install something that they say is going to be uh, set up to fail. Um, 
in so, not so many words. Uh, mm -hmm. They said that we have a reputation, and it's the first time in 27 years we're going to refuse to bid, and that's what they did. So we did get the same bidder again all right, uh, that we had the first time. Uh, and again, I'm in the process of talking to some of the other contractors to find out why they did not bid it. Uh, we could always award it, but again, it's only one bid that we received. Uh, mm -hmm. And I have not made a recommendation to council yet. Okay. When I do that, um, if council chooses to go with this company, uh, the timeline on it is uh, nine weeks. Um, uh, stuff has to be, the shop drawings have to be submitted, it has to be fabricated. Once they get to the uh, construction part, they said it takes about two days, uh, possibly three. But it's a, a nine week lead time uh, okay. before they get out. All right, very good. Does anybody have a question for Mr. Chuni with respect to that? Mrs. Hubman, I will yield to you here. Did we have um, install date at, what, at one time or not? Not to my knowledge, no. no. I understand. Yeah, uh, yeah. We had dates when we were going to go out for bids and uh, advertise for bids and open bids. But until uh, you get that and you award a contract, we can't have an install Are you willing to tell us who the one bidder is? Uh, Charles Schultz Company. Charles Schultz Incorporated, I think it is. Uh, that may be. Do you remember, Kelly? <laughs> that was it. <laughs> okay. All right. Uh, there are no further questions for Mr. Chuni? Unless, no? Okay. Very good. Thank you, Mr. Chuni. All right. Uh, well, then we will move on now to the regular agenda items. The first item is item A, a motion to accept planning commission <coughs> recommendation 4419 Churchill Boulevard, Ronald Kluchin, architect, Andrew and Issa Lefkowitz, uh, request for an 18.4% land variance to build an attached private indoor pool house. Uh, Mr. McConville, do you want to speak at, at this juncture about this? Or I'm sorry, it's Mr. Kluchin, you're here, yes? Is he here? No. He's not here. No, he's not here. Okay. All right, well, Mr. McConville, do you want to sure. say uh, something at this point? Uh, members of Council Planning Commission met last Thursday to consider the application um, of Andrew and Isa Lefkowitz presented by uh, Ronald Kluchin, their architect, um, in which they propose um, an addition onto their home on Churchill in conjunction with um, a, both a, a demolition and a rebuild of um, the adjoining home that they owned on, own on Groveland. Um, you can see from the drawings in front of you that um, the, the two parcels that back up into Churchill um, on Groveland um, are, are both owned by the applicants, so they own those three parcels. Um, the reason that was provided to the Planning Commission um, for the demolition and rebuild uh, proposal on Groveland is that there's no other way to access the back of the property on Churchill um, it, for, for purposes of construction. Uh, the building that's proposed or the, the addition that's proposed to be added to the home on Churchill would house an indoor uh, swimming pool um, I don't have the exact specifications of that structure. Um, I do know that the um, allowable land coverage is 25% and the applicant needs an 18.4% variance from that land coverage um, requirement. Um, at the Planning Commission, uh, the members voted to approve the site plan um, along with approving the demolition and the rebuild subject to some contingencies. Um, most notable among the contingencies was that the applicant enter into a development agreement with the city um, that would contain bonding sufficient to ensure that um, the home on Groveland would both be um, demolished and rebuilt in a narrow time frame and giving the city uh, the ability to access funds to build a home on the property if it were not. Um, and the second uh, notable contingency um, is the approval and the granting of the land coverage variance from the Board of Zoning Appeals. Um, I wanna comment specifically on that point because that's sort of a change in procedure um, for the city that is the result of um, the change in the composition of the Board of Zoning Appeals last year 
and the removal of council as an appellate body to the Board of Zoning Appeals. Um, it used to be the case, um, as you may remember, that um, any Board of Zoning Appeals decision could be appealed to council. And so council served as the final arbiter within the city of any zoning decision. However, when we reconstituted the Board of Zoning Appeals last year, we removed that layer of appeal and made any appeal of a Board of Zoning Appeals decision direct to the Court of Common Pleas. Um, as a result, City Council no longer serves as the final arbiter of zoning matters and therefore it's no longer appropriate for the Planning Commission to consider variance requests that end up before Council. Um, this brings the city more in line with what other municipalities do in terms of the approval of plans and the granting of variances. But I did want to point <coughs> out um, that approval by council um, would not be of the variance itself. It would be of the site plan um, with any contingencies um, that council wanted to put on that approval provided that the, the variance that's needed will need to be heard by the Board of Zoning Appeals. All right, thank you, Mr. McConville. Uh, however, uh, we are at a juncture where um, uh, Mr. Kluchin is not here, and I think I was under the impression he would be here this evening to present. And while we don't know why he's not here, uh, I think it would probably be best. Um, you know, we could have a discussion about uh, this item, but I, I would be hesitant to, uh, I think you would benefit from hearing from him. So it may behoove us to simply table this item and the next item until Mr. Kluchin can join us. I agree, Mr. Mayor, and I would uh, move that we table items um, A and B as it pertains to the property on Groveland Road and on Churchill Road until Somebody from that party is here to uh, answer, answer the questions that we might have. And I, I would just ask that we do that one at a time. Sure. Uh, <coughs> okay. That's what I meant. Mm -hmm. First, I move that we table item A. Okay. Okay. All right. We have a motion to table agenda item A. Yes. My name is Ken Weeder. I live at 4433 Churchill. Yeah, Mr. Uh, Weeder. I, yes. Uh, there was a public forum comment at the beginning of the meeting. I, I don't know why you didn't join us then to talk. I didn't know that we were going to go this far with this discussion here. Um, uh, as I understood it, you, uh, I, I really didn't understand what is going on here. So well, let, let me try to shed some light on sure, that. Sure, go ahead. Um, our ordinances require that any um, site plan uh, for new construction um, that you're familiar with from the Planning Commission meeting be approved both by the Planning Commission and by City Council. So the Council is considering the same application that Planning Commission considered last week. Um, however, the applicant isn't here and the concern is that these hearings are evidentiary in nature and so that it, it may be um, premature for council to consider um, the applicant's um, application without their having a chance to be here and, and uh, present it. Now, council doesn't have to wait for the applicant, but they can't afford the applicant that courtesy because there appears to have been some miscommunication about um, the requirement that they appear. So it's up to council whether they want to, to table the matter to be heard at another council meeting or whether they want to proceed and, and hear it tonight. And, at the moment, and, we have and that's where we are. To take. Okay. Would it, I, I didn't realize that, that it was going to be, I, I came just to, to the meeting because I wanted to be at the meeting. Um, but I didn't realize that uh, had Mr. Kluchin been here or one of the uh, families from, from next door that you would actually have a vote um, on this issue. Would it be possible for me uh, to get a site plan of what it is they intend to do because as I understand it the what they're pro pro proposing to do to add to their house would take them from the back of their house existing to three feet from the property line at the back um, is that correct so so we're we're about to table this which means we're not going to vote on it tonight I so. still like to have this I'm information sure you could get that in the meantime between now and the next meeting. from whom probably the council clerk okay 
right, so that'll be all, fine. It's all it's all publicly available, so you'll certainly okay. Be that able would to get be fine. I would appreciate that. Yeah. Thanks. Thank you, Mr. Wiseman. I'll, I'll renew my motion, Mr. Mayor, that we table uh, item A, mm -hmm. uh, the motion until the parties are here to answer the questions that, uh, that we may have. Okay. We have a motion to table item A by Mr. Wiseman. Is there a second? Second. Okay. Second by Mr. Sims. If there's no discussion, Mrs. Thomas, will you call the roll? Mr. Rock? Aye. Mr. Wiseman? Aye. Mr. Sims? Aye. Mrs. Pardee? Aye. Mr. Erdl? Aye. Mrs. Cameron? Aye. Mrs. Wise? Aye. Okay. Motion is to... Er, Agenda item A is tabled. Uh, agenda if I may, Mr. Mayor, yes. make the same motion with respect to item B that we table that well, if I, until if the I, parties are here. Yeah, if I could just read what item B is for the record, and then if I'll <coughs> hear your motion. Motion item B is motion to accept Planning Commission recommendation Ronald Kluchin Architect Andrew Anisa Lefkowitz to demolish house located at 445 A Groveland, in permanent parcel number 721-21-007. Mr. Wiseman, you have the floor. Uh, thank you, Mr. Mayor. Yes, I move that we table that item. Okay, we have a motion to table by Mr. Wiseman. Is there a second? Second. Second by Mr. Sims. Question. There, yes, Mr. Sims. Uh, I need to know more about what this development agreement is with the city mm -hmm. and um, also what assurances um, would exist with respect to the rebuild of the property, financial and otherwise. So I would just put that out there now so mm -hmm. that the parties are aware. Okay, very good. And and the development agreement has not yet been negotiated, but but generally uh, there would be a bonding requirement to ensure that if for some reason the applicant was unable to proceed with completing the construction of the replacement house, that uh, the city or whatever interested party would be able to execute against the bond to ensure that the construction was then completed. Um, then my follow-up question would be, who's preparing the development agreement? I believe Mr. McConville will be preparing it. Okay, very good. Is there any further discussion on item B? If there is none, Mrs. Thomas, we call the roll on the motion of table. Mr. Rock? Aye. Mr. Wiseman? Aye. Mr. Sims? Aye. Mrs. Pardee? Aye. Mr. Erdl? Aye. Mrs. Cameron? Aye. Mrs. Wise? Aye. Okay, this item is now tabled. We are now on to agenda item C. Recommendation to ex Accept the vacation and dedication plat for University Boulevard median area. Mr. Grogan Myers, Mr. Chuni, if you would address us on this <coughs> item. Yes, Mayor, thank you. I, I prepared this uh, vacation and dedication plat, and it was approved by uh, Planning Commission last week. But uh, Mr. Patrick Grogan Myers has decided to uh, come up here and help me and give a background on why we need this, and which I will fill in after you. <laughs> okay, very good. Thank you, Joe. Um, good evening, Council. So um, the vacation and dedication plat before you uh, came up through what, what I would consider maybe a little bit more circuitous route than uh, is typical. Um, so in the newly created Housing and Community Development Department, one of the first things we've begun to do is look at um, delinquent property taxes throughout the city for various reasons. Um, but one of the things that came up was this parcel. Um, it is a parcel that the city has owned since 1954. The city had acquired it through a tax uh, foreclosure and sale from the Van Swearingen Company uh, back when they were going out of business, um, when they failed on their debts um, and, and failed to pay the property taxes. Van the Van Swearingen Company, yes. The so company. the the company. So the southern part of University Heights um, was part of the Van Swearingen Company's plans and, and development. Um, and for, for the members of the public, um, the current property that we're discussing is a city-owned property. Um, it is the tree line median on University Boulevard, right near Fairmount Circle. Um, it is, to my knowledge and, and to my review, the only tree line median in the city of University Heights that is actually a parcel. Um, the rest of them are dedicated public right-of-way. So part of this is the unglamorous work of the government, which is just cleaning up some of these oddities that maybe should have been taken care of years ago or for whatever reason weren't taken care of years ago. Um, but currently, we have a couple hundred dollars of assessments that we've assessed ourselves over the years and have been accruing uh, a little bit of interest and penalties. Um, so this is the first step, so uh, vacating and dedicating um, to the public right of way. Um, and then I believe at the next council meeting, we'll come back and, and ask uh, for the passage of some legislation to send down to the county to clear our own assessments on our own parcel. <laughs> um, so that's the background. Like I say, it's a little bit more uh, unconventional route 
Um, but that's how it arrives with Mr. Chuni and then the Planning Commission. Okay, very good. Thank you, Mr. Grevin Myers. Mr. Chuni. Okay, so what I put in front of everybody this evening is the uh, updated plat. Um, and it's just slightly different from the one I presented at Planning Commission because I had a couple spelling errors on, this, on the streets. Um, if you look at the plat, again, it's the tree line median on University Boulevard, and the University Boulevard comes northwest out of the uh, Fairmont Circle area. You know, uh, on this on this plat, Orangeville Center Road is uh, up and down, straight up is north, and then uh, uh, Fairmont goes west and east. Um, as you can see on here, and this, this is uh, the update that I have for you, is that uh, part of this median is actually in the city of Shaker Heights. If you can see that on the plan, um, it is there is a parcel number, a separate parcel number. Uh, for Shaker Heights' portion of this median versus University Heights' portion. I have had discussions with the city of Shaker Heights and they will also like to uh, vacate and dedicate this to public right away. Uh, we cannot get on their agenda until February, so we'll be on their planning commission first and then their uh, city council as well, but I would recommend you pass this and we can clean up this area for once and for all. Thank you, Mr. Chuni. Does anybody have any questions for Mr. Chuni or Mr. Grogan Myers? Uh, I have a question there. Yes, Mr. Okay. Sanders. Okay. So uh, I just want to make sure that I understand what we're doing. First of all, is there is no intent to uh, change the use or the purpose of the parcel. And That's this correct. is primarily yeah. just an administrative action that we're taking. We want it to become a dedicated public roadway, and part of the public roadway is a median, a grass median with trees in it. Right now it's a piece of property right. sitting in the middle of the road. Yeah. Right, so um, like I was asking, the purpose is administrative to, to dedicate this as a roadway. And then you mentioned Shaker. Um, and I just wanted to make sure that I understood what you said was necessary with the city of Shaker. Same thing we're going through here. Yeah. Down at the, uh, <clears throat> the closest part to the circle is actually in Shaker Heights. So the tip of that median is in Shaker Heights, they, so they have to do the same thing. Okay, so. And they have agreed to do that yeah, with this plan. They have? Uh, yes, they have. Yeah. Great, thank you. We have to go through the same process, planning commission and, and council, but they have agreed to do it. Right, so we own the parcel, but a part of it is in Shaker. They own their part, we own ours. They own their part. That is correct. Okay. Okay, thank you. Okay, thank you, Mr. Sims. Any further questions? Mr. Rock. Or a comment. Um, we discussed this at the Planning Commission meeting, and um, this would still be uh, managed and maintained by the city of University Heights, and the grass will still be cut by the city. And we are not going to build Shaker Heights for the years and for the <laughs> three feet of grass. Yeah. I don't know who cuts the grass. You got to ask the service trick. No. Okay. Very good. Any further comments or questions? Is there a motion? Um, where is it on the agenda? I don't like see. <coughs> So I would move that council accept the vacation and dedication flat for University Boulevard median area. Is that a correct motion? Yes. All right. Very good. We have a motion by Mr. Sims. Is there a second? Second. Second by Mrs. Weiss. Any discussion? If there is none, Mrs. Thomas, will you call the roll? Mr. Rock? Aye. Mr. Wiseman? Aye. Mr. Sims? Aye. Mrs. Pardee? Aye. Mr. Erdl? Aye. Mrs. Cameron? Aye. Mrs. Wise? Aye. Very good motion passes. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Grogan Myers. Thank you, Mr. Chuney, for your work on this. Uh, item D is motion to seek bids to abate the public nuisance at 3765 Meadowbrook Boulevard, permanent parcel number 722-22-22. 016. Um, Mr. McReynolds, Mr. Grogan Myers, uh, whichever among you or both of you will be addressing us on this. Please come to the podium, Mr. Grogan Myers. Thank you, Mayor. Um, so, Council, as you may remember, um, back uh, uh, in June, uh, we had come before you to ask to declare the uh, property at 3765 Meadowbrook Boulevard a public nuisance. 
um, and that was based on the unfortunate pictures um, in your council packet um, showing, um, and based on the, the neighbor complaint that there were um, rats and rodents running around the property, uh, coming in and out of the basement um, through a broken window, through um, missing bricks and, and mortar um, along the, the stoop and the, the basement wall, um, and there are some pictures to that effect in your council packet. Um, so at that time, you had declared it a public nuisance, um, and we have continued the process of notification to the property owner at all known addresses we can find. Um, the, uh, it came to the city's attention that there were um, some open windows on the property, so the prosecutor and myself um, obtained a second uh, administrative warrant and entered the property two days after Christmas um, to re-secure the property, and at which time we also just, you know, we checked all the windows, checked all the doors just to make sure everything was secure, um, and unfortunately nothing has changed with the property. Um, it, it, in some ways, has only gotten worse. Um, mold continues to grow. Um, the feces and everything else are still present in the home. Um, so, uh, before you tonight, we are asking for a um, the ability to go and seek bids to remediate the nuisance, which is allowed under our ordinances, um, which would include, um, you know, any cleanup of the excrement and anything else associated with that um, inside the home, as well as the um, ceiling of the property to prevent the rodents from coming in and out as they have been. Um, it, it, it seems to continue to be a problem um, just based on observation standing outside the property. Okay, thank you, Mr. Grugemeyers. Mr. McReynolds, anything to add? Thank you, Mayor. Uh, we've investigated this property. We've uh, continually tried to make uh, contact with the owner of record and the owner of record continues to pay the taxes. Uh, we don't know if the property is insured, but every attempt that we've made to contact the owner has uh, resulted with no contact on their part. Uh, by moving in this direction, we may be able to, to gain their attention, and that's our intention, is to try to gain their attention. But in the meantime, to try to eradicate the nuisance that the people next door are forced to endure. And, uh, if you were to visit this property and open the door, you would know exactly what I mean. During the summer months, the stench will be unbearable from a few feet away from the property. So uh, it seems prudent to go ahead and, and ask for your permission to go ahead and uh, erase this nuisance from our community and to uh, ask the owner to pay for these measures. Thank you. Okay, thank you, Mr. McReynolds. Does anybody have any questions for uh, either Mr. Grogan Myers or Mr. McReynolds? Mr. Sims. Thank you, Mayor. Um, I just didn't understand the last comment that you made about what did you just say in your closing remark? That we're looking for your permission to go ahead and eradicate this nuisance from our neighborhood and promote the cost to the owner of record. Okay. And through legal means. Now, uh, that yeah, could mean, I'm, I'm you know, leave. I just, okay. I, I, I didn't quite understand what you had said. Thank you. Very good. Thank you. Uh, Mrs. Cameron. I just wanted to verify with Mr. McDonald, by legal means you meant, do you mean that you want to assign the cost onto the um, tax duplicate uh, in that way? If that's the appropriate method. Uh, I would work with our law director on, on seeking yeah, the there, if council approves, there are several legal issues we'll need to address, including our ability to access the property. But um, this is this action, as I understand it, is aimed purely at eliminating a current nuisance um, situation. There are other um, enforcement avenues that we will be pursuing concurrently. Um, hopefully, um, the owner will be compelled to appear before um, KJ Montgomery, Judge Montgomery, um, and, and there are some additional strategies that we've discussed if that's not effective. So um, we're intending to take a comprehensive approach, but uh, initially um, we want to take steps to eliminate the nuisance condition to the extent possible. Okay. Okay, very good. Thank you, Mr. McConville. Thank you, Mrs. Cameron. Any further questions or comments? Mr. Wiseman. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. <clears throat> First of all, thank you, gentlemen, for, for uh, running this down. This is probably the, the nastiest job that, uh, that you'll have in University Heights, and I really appreciate the efforts that you've put forth 
Uh, these tuna cans look familiar. Did we see pictures of this house before? Yes. Yes, and we did what at that time? Um, that was back in June when um, we came before you. You're absolutely correct that the pictures and the memo um, from both uh, Mr. McReynolds and myself um, were asking for the declaration of public nuisance. Um, and that's when uh, you declared it a public nuisance. Um, and so I wanted to include that as both um, just it's a good history of kind of our our action steps with the property um, up to date, and then also just the photos. Um, so that's just kind of recapping what we had done up to that point. <clears throat> okay, I, thank you very much. So uh, I, here's my vote to, for you to contact the land bank because I know that they have people whose job it is to come out and assess a property like this and give us an idea about how much it will cost to remediate it and make it make it a house again. Also, we had that law firm that came here and did fix up that house on. Um, mm -hmm. Uh, Silky Street, Road, Mr. Mr. York, I yes. backs, and I wonder if that's something that uh, the city can avail itself of. I know we were all surprised at how good that house was. I don't know what that entails sitting here now, but I just that's an avenue of recovery. I think I think that's something, you know, something so, certainly something that I would approve of. I mean, I think <clears throat> uh, taking action and putting on a tax duplicate may just delay it a little more. I, I know I noticed that there was a foreclosure action in 2010 and 2011. The one in 11 was dismissed in 2012. And it's typical of cases like this where the house was empty and the bank would come in and say, oh, you know what, let's dismiss it and get out of it and, and be away from it. And the house, the neighbors have said the house had been empty at least since 2011, 2012. And it's just, unfortunately, there's not a lot of things we can do as a city. I'm glad to see we're finally getting aggressive and finally doing stuff about, the, about this house. And, and uh, uh, anything we can do to make it become a house again and clean it up, I certainly would be, uh, would be in favor of. Um, Thank you, thank you, gentlemen. I really appreciate that. I really appreciate. Everything. We're not. We're just for the record. We're not talking about demo now. We want to. We want to clean it up, get all the garbage out, and, uh, take the rats out too, probably. And, uh, yeah. Underneath the home, it's a very beautiful home. Right. Yeah. Beautiful views looking down from the back. Right. Okay. All right. Thank you, gentlemen. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Appreciate it. Thank you, Mr. Wiseman. Mr. Rook. Hi. Are these owners local, or where are they at? Well, we, we've traced addresses to several different locations, Okay. none of which have panned out, uh, according to our correspondence. I think one of the recent ones was Akron area, and uh, a couple other areas, I think out of state, but uh, I, I don't recall exactly which, which cities. The person is not local. It's not like in a local entity that we can actually uh, serve. Okay, so... Who's cutting the grass right now? So, so I guess let me, let me take a step back. So the addresses we have um, that we've been able to locate through traditional Google searches and, and sleuthing, as I would call it, um, have, have been local addresses. Um, we've obtained, I believe it is three local addresses um, for the property, um, and we have mailed out notices to all those last known addresses of sorts. Um, with at least two, I, I can't speak authoritatively on the third, um, because we just sent out an, another letter, but those letters have come back. Um, so as far as who's cutting the grass, um, we asked the neighbors, because when we served the first administrative warrant, everyone was wondering why they were, uh, the, you know, the fire department, two police officers, um, you know, the, the Board of Health, myself, the prosecutor out in the yard. Um, they came out and they had provided us the name of a landscaping company that we have not been able to locate. Did it's, show up and cut the grass? And, and as far as we know, and as far as we could tell, the grass has been cut. Mm -hmm. yeah. um, so it's, it's... Yeah, I mean, there, there's, there's a number of interesting things that have occurred here. The, the, the taxes appear to be current, to the best of our understanding. The mortgage is current. There's a roof on it that's about two years old, mm -hmm. even though it's been vacant since roughly 2011. Correct. And so somebody's putting occasional money and care into this house at a certain level, but not at the but not at the level that's necessary to prevent it from being a nuisance. Correct. Yes, Mrs. Purdy. Thank you. I'm glad you confirmed that it's a beautiful house because from the pictures, it looks like a magnificent house. And I'm also glad to hear that we're cleaning it up. So there's no thought of anything else right now. And we know how important that is to the neighbors and just for the health of the city. So I too thank you for this work and that we're moving forward. I think it's very odd, the status that it's in, in terms of all the payments and continuing situations, but we will take it on ourselves to take care of that mess inside. 
So I'm happy to make a motion to seek bids to abate the public nuisance at 3765 Meadowbrook Boulevard. Very good. We have a motion by Mrs. Party. Is there a second? I'll second. Second by Mr. Rock. Any further discussion? Seeing none, Mrs. Thomas, we call the roll. Mr. Rock? Aye. Mr. Wiseman? Aye. Mr. Sims? Aye. Mrs. Pardee? Aye. Mr. Erdo? Aye. Mrs. Cameron? Aye. Mrs. Weiss? Aye. Okay, very good. Motion passes. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. McReynolds. Thank you, Mr. Grogan Myers. Next is item E, motion to approve and accept city engineering service rate fees from GPD Group for 2019. Uh, Mr. Chuni, would you care to uh, address the council on this item? Thank you, Mayor. Um, I submitted uh, the schedule of rates for the various disciplines in my company. We uh, held our rates in, from 2017 into 2018, and uh, we are asking for a modest increase in 2019. Okay. This is the same uh, schedule of rates that we give to uh, your neighboring cities, where we're also the named city engineer. It's the exact same rates. So we don't charge University Heights any different than Shaker Heights or Beachwood or Bedford or uh, Hunting Valley. We don't get a discount? Yeah. <laughs> Would that be nice? <laughs> it's tough, so tough for me to explain. You've got to give the same speech to the other cities. <laughs> yes. yes. But we're supposed to be his favorite. Right. You are my favorite. <laughs> you know. Okay. No discount. Oh. Mm -hmm. <laughs> well, we do thank you for having been able to hold a year before you were able to, before it was necessary to raise the rates, and it seems as if the rates are in line as far as you know what we're doing here i would certainly recommend that we go ahead and accept the uh, uh the rate increase i don't know if there's any further discussion or anything else i would like to say about it except why is it university heights your favorite <laughs> or it is but but still can't say so <laughs> <laughs> yes all right this is thank you mr riddle to approve uh, the uh, uh, city engineering service rate fees uh, increased from uh, GPD Group for 2019. Very good. We have a motion to accept the increase by GPD Group by Mr. Ertl. Is there a second? Second. Second by Mrs. Weiss. Is there any discussion? Okay. Uh, seeing none, Mrs. Thomas, we call the roll. Mr. Rock? Aye. Mr. Weisman? Aye. Mr. Sims? Aye. Mrs. Pardee? Aye. Mr. Ertl? Aye. Mrs. Cameron? Aye. Mrs. Weiss? Aye. Okay, very good. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you, Mr. Chuney. All right, next item is item F, Ordinance 2019-01, updating Chapter 14 of the Codified Ordinances by enacting Sections 142411 entitled Cancellation Fee and 142412 entitled No Charge Permit. This is on first reading. Mr. McReynolds, were you going to speak on this or? Oh, Mr. Gregor Myers, yes. Thank you, Mayor. Um, so, Council, um, so it's been a busy couple weeks here. Um, so, uh, thank you to the Law Director for your help in uh, writing this legislation. So, before you tonight um, is some legislation, one, um, establishing a cancellation fee. Um, so, what this does is for the contractors or the uh, landlords or the property managers or uh, real estate agents, whatever the case may be, um, who cancel an appointment um, less than 20 with less than 24 hours notice can be charged a um, cancellation fee of, of $100 um, and this became apparent somewhat quickly in the six weeks I've been the housing director um, we've had over half a dozen rental properties cancel their appointments um, or just flat out not show for their appointment um, and this comes at the expense of other people who might have scheduled appointments or wanted to schedule appointments for the same time um, and as a result, our inspectors are scheduled for blocks of time, depending on the inspection, um, and that block of time was foregone because someone chose not to show up or could not show up. Um, we're not trying to be punitive, but it's, it's allowing us to charge um, a, fee, a cancellation fee for those who are chronic abusers of this, of which there are unfortunately a couple. Um, and then the second part of this legislation would codify something that has been a standard practice in the city, um, which is a no charge permit. So that is work that is um, being done by the city, uh, or I'm, excuse me, for the city by contractors. Um, we don't charge them a permit fee. 
Um, what we do require them to do is register as contractors here in the city. Um, so that's just a brief overview of what we're looking at. Okay, very good. Thank you, Mr. Grogan Myers. Any questions for Mr. Grogan Myers? I have a question. Mr. Mr. Sims, well, you? Actually, I just request a clarification because um, you, you, you indicated that um, if a uh, person, a party, would cancel that the city may charge. Okay, and I think that they shall charge, meaning that if, the, if there's a cancellation, there will be a charge. Is that correct? That is the way the legislation is written. I, I would ask um, for a little bit of administrative discretion only in the case of extraordinary circumstances. Um, but you can't have, depending yeah, on the- yeah. I, I get real nervous about that type okay. of administrative discretion just because um, you know the law should apply equally to all. So um, if you cancel with, within 24 hours, you wouldn't pay the fee. But if you, if you don't, you cancel late or you um, fail to show up um, under this, I, I, my interpretation and, and my advice is that everyone be charged the fee without exception. Fair enough. <laughs> okay, thank you, Mr. McConville and Mr. Samus. Mr. Wiseman. Yes, thank you, Mayor. Um, so uh, I would suggest that we hand out with somebody whenever they uh, set up an inspection, a sheet of paper that says, here's the deal, there's a cancellation fee. If you cancel, you can charge the fee. So to sort of protect ourselves so nobody can come back and say, hey, what's the deal? I, I never heard about this fee, so everybody knows. I think that would make us, I think that would make Mr. Grogan Meyer's job a little easier. He'd have less people asking for the, to not be charged less if he was able to say, look, you, you knew about this when you set it up, so it's really on you. Uh, I have a question about the no charge fee. That's for what particular permits or every permit? For all work performed for the city by contractors. Oh, for the city. Correct. Right. Okay. It is only for the city. Contractors who are coming in to do the work for the city. Yeah, and we've been charging them permit fees? We no. have not been charging them permit fees. Uh -huh. Okay, great. I think that's great then. Thank you. Mm -hmm. it, it simply codifies uh, what our actual practice has been. Right. Any other questions, comments? Well, this is the first reading, so if, if there's nothing further, then it has been read. And we'll see it again in an upcoming meeting. Thank you, Mr. Grogan Meyer. I, is, is there any reason to refer this to committee? I, I don't know that there's a uh, need here to do that before I... Uh, no, I think we can just go ahead and put it on for the next, mm -hmm. next city council meeting in two weeks. Two weeks from... Uh, tomorrow. Okay, very good. Um, next item is item G, motion to hold an executive <coughs> session immediately following this regular meeting for the purpose of discussing personnel, legal, and real estate matters. And yes, we do need to have an executive <coughs> session. Uh, and uh, I think you all probably know why. So uh, it is for uh, legal and real estate matters. And uh, we will have one immediately following the meeting if there is a motion to do that. So I would ask for a motion. So moved. Second. Thank you, Mr. Wiseman, and thank you, Mr. Ertle. Motion by Mr. Wiseman, second by Mr. Ertle. If there's no discussion, Mrs. Thomas, will you call the roll? Mr. Rott? Aye. Mr. Wiseman? Aye. Mr. Sims? Aye. Mrs. Pardee? Aye. Mr. Ertle? Aye. Mrs. Cameron? Um, aye. Mrs. Wise? Aye. Everybody eat your vegetables. <laughs> Very good. We'll now move on to director's reports. First is finance. I have a brief report from our finance director. Uh, Let's see. Uh, with regard to the fire department ladder truck, paperwork is being finalized with leasing to Inc. for the financing of the 2019 Sutphin heavy duty 100 foot mid mount aerial ladder for the fire department. With respect to the implementation of VIP fusion accounting and payroll systems, the finance department is working on the implementation of the new accounting system, issuing of purchase orders and payments through the VIP fusion general ledger is expected to uh, begin this week. The switch of payroll processing from ADP to the new accounting system is not expected to occur until February of 2019. Due to the switch between accounting systems, council should expect to see a supplement to the temporary appropriations on the agenda 
for the next council meeting in order to reappropriate carryover fund balances associated with carryover 2018 purchase orders. Okay. And that would conclude uh, Mr. Goff's report. I know that um, I, I believe Mrs. Party will bring up in her report with respect to uh, scheduling of upcoming finance committee meetings. So we'll Thank you. save that part for them. <laughs> next, Director of Law, Mr. McConville. Thank you, Mayor. Uh, Council, I want to provide you with a brief update on a few different matters. Um, first, we have some good news regarding the property at 3958 Silsby. As you may recall, this is the um, property uh, owned by Ms. Rhoda Miller, who is in guardianship. Um, the probate court has ruled in favor of uh, her application to sell the property. Um, I've been in contact with her legal counsel. I anticipate having a signed purchase agreement either later this evening or tomorrow morning, and we are shooting for a closing date of February 7th. So we're going to get title work generated in a hurry and, and plan to close as soon as possible on that property. Um, you may recall I, I um, uh, indicated that we were a little bit confused as to why we hadn't heard back from Speedway um, regarding our um, offer to them to take the small um, sliver of property necessary to um, do the um, streetlight improvement project there. We have heard back from um, Speedway that they intend to sign the plat this week. So we should have a signed plat and be able to um, close that transaction in the immediate future as well. And finally, um, we will be filing an administrative warrant um, on the former KFC property owned by Mr. Ayung this week um, so that we can have our appraiser walk the property and issue an appraisal um, for purposes of pursuing ownership of that as well. And that concludes my report. Okay. Thank you, Mr. McConville. Any questions for Mr. McConville? Okay, very good. We will now move on to public safety. We'll start with police, Chief Rogers. Thank you, Mayor. Uh, Council, I'll be reporting on what item tonight pertaining to our hiring updates. Um, before I get into my report, I would also like to acknowledge the police blotter over the past two weeks and the holidays and numerous personnel vacations. The police blotter will be provided tomorrow for the past two weeks. So, moving into the report of hiring updates uh, related to our four vacancies, we hired two new police officers last Wednesday Officer Josh Stan and Officer Mike Smith. They start orientation, they will be in orientation through the rest of this week, and then that'll be followed by up to three months of field training. Both of these officers do have prior law enforcement experience, so we anticipate that their training may not take three months, but we'll see how it goes. Um, so we still, for the two remaining vacant positions, we have background checks are ongoing at this time. And the vacant administrative assistant position, um, we are in the process of filling that now, and we hope to have a candidate in place uh, by the first week of February. And that completes my report. Thank you, Mr. Rogers, or Chief Rogers, excuse me. Uh, does anybody have any questions for Chief <coughs> Rogers? I do. Chief, Mr. Um, you just filled two officer positions, and you have two additional officer positions to fill? Correct. Okay. So just briefly, how do, we, how do you identify individuals for those positions? And you know, what, just briefly, what is the process? Well, the process starts with a civil service process. So when we have a vacancy, which we have four now, uh, we'll put out a notice for a vacancy and then there will be an entrance test. Uh, we have to provide sufficient time for the notice uh, to the public before the test actually occurs. Certain requirements like having um, um, GED or um, graduation, high school graduation, um, police academy can give individuals extra credit, uh, college, uh, degrees can give people extra credit, military service. Um, it identifies the essential job functions, obviously, in the notice. And then we'll have the written test. Of those individuals who pass the written test, then there is a physical agility test. And once we combine those results, um, a list gets certified by the Civil Service Commission. And rules are in place through the commission that require us to hire one of three of the, of the names that are certified. 
So once we have a list of three that are certified, then we start the background check process, which can take anywhere from four weeks to six or eight weeks, depending on how lengthy the background check needs to be to confirm that the candidate um, has the background and the character traits that we're looking for. Uh, once the background check's completed, which also includes multiple interviews um, and different elements of uh, confirming that this candidate can move forward in the process, uh, then we do uh, a conditional offer. And what a conditional offer is, is contingent on uh, things like polygraph testing, medical testing, psychological evaluation testing. And once a candidate can go through all those parameters of the hiring process, uh, then they are in a place to then be hired. So it is, a, it is a very lengthy process. It takes many months, and we are now at a point where we can hire officers. So. Thank you. You answered my question because one of my main questions was relating to the uh, psychological testing and you know when and where that was done. Mm -hmm. So that's done after the conditional offer. Correct. Okay. And the civil service board or commission that you referred to, is that a local board or? Correct. Okay, so we have, our city has a civil service commission. That is correct. Thank you. <coughs> okay, very good. Thank you. Does anybody else have any questions for Chief Rogers? Well, if not, then thank you, Chief. <coughs> Chief Burka for the fire department. Thank you, Mayor. Good evening, Council. Uh, tonight before the Council meeting, we had our formal swearing-in ceremony uh, for four of our new hires and five of our officers that were promoted and hired back in November. Um, our four new hires have completed their four weeks of orientation. Um, today, two of the members started on shift for the first time, and tomorrow the second two will also. Um, we still have some remaining hiring to do, and we'll be conducting interviews towards the end of um, this month to start that process and finish it up. Um, those train those uh, new members have been training in the corner house on the corner of Silsby and Saybrook that the city owns. We've utilized that for some fire training drills with them. Um, our Fire Prevention Bureau opened as of the first of the year. So we now have our fire prevention officer um, staffing that. Uh, and our administrative assistant has started today as well. Now we're going to be hosting four CPR classes this year uh, that are scheduled already. And the first one is January 24th at the library. Thank you. Okay, thank you, Chief Perko. Does anybody have any questions for Chief Perko? Mrs. Cameron. Yes, sir. Um, on the first aid uh, class, are those required every year if you have a first aid certificate? Are they have to be renewed? You have to renew it, yes. Okay. Okay. Thank you. Mr. Ertle. Yes, Chief. Uh, there was some talk uh, a couple of meetings back about, uh, you know, I think applying for a grant for um, smoke detectors, residential smoke detectors. Any word on that? Uh, we did apply. It was turned in, and they're still evaluating it at this time. Okay, I was just wondering whether or not I should make the purchase for new batteries from I do have some batteries in stock from the Red Cross. <laughs> I've got the one outside my bedroom that's been malfunctioning. I know, it's annoying. Yeah, I put the battery in, and it says there's a fire. I'm like, well, there's a battery. probably add a disclaimer for people to discard their Christmas trees uh, in an early fashion so that they don't linger around and dry out and become a fire hazard. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I took down my tree, but that alarm is still going off. <laughs> yes. Okay. Anything else for Chief Perko? All right. Very good. Thank you, Chief Perko. Uh, next is service, Mr. Picorni. Thank you, Mayor and Council. Um, leaf collection, as the Mayor had mentioned, has come to an end for the fall collection. We'll be back again in April, starting up again to pick up everything that people put out in April. Um, tree, collect, uh, tree pruning, we have uh, currently been doing the pruning on Ashurst and uh, Edgerton, and we'll be continuing down Edgerton and moving on to Dysart next. 
um, that's pretty much my whole report for this evening. Oh, that's Unless great. there's some questions. Does anybody have any questions for Mr. Picorni? I do. Mr. Erdl. Um, two questions. Uh, the tree planting that's going to be going on in the uh, late, late fall. Correct. Uh, not specifically, but in general, how do you how do you determine uh, who gets trees on the tree line and who does not? I mean, my neighbor across the street has <coughs> four, and a couple of houses down got none. So I'm just curious. Right. Uh, in general, we will follow the tree removal program that we're doing currently. So you'll see new trees going in next fall in the southwestern section of town where we're currently doing pruning and removal. So. All the trees we remove, we try to plant trees back in those sites as long as people are agreeable. Uh, the reason for the four trees in the one location, he actually ended up with an additional tree. I know the house you're talking about on yeah. Miramar. Uh, he had requested uh, three of one type of tree, and we had added another one because really? we were looking for a home. So do you contact everybody and put a tree in? What? We try to, yes. Oh, okay. All right. One of the earlier locations you had mentioned where they didn't receive one, it's because there were uh, uh, stump grindings and other things that the contractor could not dig through yeah. in order to get a tree planted there, which is why it got moved down the street. You know each house I'm talking about, don't you? I, I, I walk <laughs> them all, I mark them all, I, I'm okay. at each one of those houses. Okay. And the other thing I want to come on, uh, the mayor mentioned early uh, on in his remarks that uh, there was, uh, there's been some discussion about it. Uh, Ring? Well, only that it, it could come up during our Citizens Park and Rec Committee. Uh, that is, uh, yes. Okay, because I, I, I thought we, you and I have talked a couple of months. Yes, we have. Mm -hmm. And uh, I'd be curious to know if that's viable, any more viable than we thought. Uh, and I'm not sure where they, they found a place to discuss putting it, but okay. we can talk about it further. Okay, all right. Okay, very good. Mr. Rock. Speaking of trees, uh, and the trees look beautiful that are being planted, so that's great. Thank you. I had a couple questions. Um, for those who got a tree, and there's these like plastic tubes around them, and mistakes, do you come around and take those down later, or does the owner have to take it down, and at what point do they take that down? It occurs both ways. Uh, in general, we will take them down, but I will leave them up until the tree is firmly planted. So you have to come up and, and kind of wiggle the tree, make sure that the roots have grown and that it's stable. Uh, the tree guards we've been leaving on because of the deer damage that we have in town. Uh, we lost many young trees if we don't leave the guards on, but we can take off the uh, the guys that are supporting the tree. Okay, so the service department will do yes. both are Correct. Okay, thank you. Yes, Mrs. Cameron. Um, hi. Uh, sir, for the plantings that have already been in for the last two or three years, um, how, how can you tell whether or not they're thriving or doing well? Uh, we do keep an eye on all the new trees. Uh, normally, if uh, one of the newer ones uh, is not going to make it, you'll see the top of the tree die out first and then it'll die top down. Um, we have a one year guarantee on all of our trees, so each year we go back to the year prior, review each of the trees and require that that previous contractor replace any dead trees. So every fall there's actually two plantings going on. There's the replacement of the year prior and the new ones. Thank you, Mrs. Cameron. Thank you, Mr. Corny. Are there any further questions or comments pertaining to the service department? If there are none, then thank you, Mr. Corny. Thank you. Very good. Uh, next is uh, the building commissioner, Mr. McReynolds. Thank you, Mayor. Good evening, members of council. Good evening. Good evening. As you're aware, the Planning Commission met last week. Uh, the three items on the agenda form our three items at the beginning of our agenda this evening. I just wanted to add that I have copies of the plans that were submitted to the Planning Commission at our office, the Building Department. If anybody has questions or would like me to go over those plans with them, I'd be more than happy to do so. Um, as far as the MICVA, the uh, construction is proceeding on that. Right now they're evaluating the sewers to see if indeed a street opening is going to be needed and to what extent. So 
If we can avoid disruption of traffic, we're going to try to do that. Belfair community is still continuing with their work on the uh, Building G. The uh, perimeter foundation is in, and they're building up the walls in concrete block. So that appears to be on schedule. Uh, tomorrow, our court docket has six cases, housing related, and um, nothing building related. Uh, Board of Zoning Appeals will meet on Wednesday of this week. There are no new items, only 10 renewal items. And uh, finally, uh, one of our inspectors, uh, one of our new hires, uh, just recently passed the test and will receive his certification as building inspector. Mm -hmm. So I just wanted to let you know that. We encourage uh, certification and continuing education in our department. Absolutely. Any questions? Any questions for Mr. McReynolds? Okay. Well, thank you, Mr. McReynolds. Uh, next, City Engineer Joe Chuney. No report, Mayor. I said enough. <laughs> Fair enough. Thank you, Mr. Chuney. Uh, communications and civic engagement, Mr. Cook. Thank you and good evening. Uh, the mayor addressed actually most of what I was going to say in my report, so um, my additions will be uh, short. As he suggested, the um, Memorial Day plan uh, parade planning kicks off tomorrow night. Um, the nice thing about this parade, as you all know, uh, Lisa did a wonderful job with the parade and it isn't like, you know, we need to come in and, and blow everything up and, and restart. Mm -hmm. uh, she suggested some items to fine tune and we'll do that. And obviously, you know, if there's any, uh, since, you know, I'm reasonably new here, I haven't seen the parade before. If there's anything that you want to see, uh, see you know, fine tune, please, you know, let me know or let the mayor know. We'll make sure that it gets addressed. Uh, the only Minor change that we've, we talked about so far, and I'm sure more will come up, is the mayor expressed interest in seeing um, more musical acts in the parade. So I think that would be the one change you would notice. But again, I'm, I'm looking forward to um, working with Rachel and, and the team on uh, make, continuing the success that is our Memorial Day parade. And finally, I just wanted to uh, give credit where credit is due, the uh, Name That Chicken contest. That was uh, Councilwoman Cameron's idea, and she also had the insight to limiting it to children, which, you know, prevent us from having to sort through a lot of food-related names. <laughs> I don't remember doing that, but thank you. Oh, I, I have the email proof if you don't remember. <laughs> but, but thank you. Okay. Thank you. Does anybody have any questions for Mr. Cook? What? All right. Very good. Thank you, Mr. Cook. Next is economic development. Mrs. Drucker. Good evening, Mayor and Council. Uh, in continuing my business visitation program, I have actually been working with Mike Cook on the promotion of two businesses in particular. Um, the one is the newly um, Rosita's, which is the new uh, fashion boutique. It's located right here on Warrensville Center Road, so just helping them promote that they're, they just opened and advertising and um, just giving them some tips on how to bring some more awareness of their store. And then also Dunkin' Donuts, although that's a store that we've had here for years, it is under new management and uh, the new manager is really taking a focus on improving customer service and um, so that we want to just bring awareness to the uh, community to um, go back, give uh, Dunkin' Donuts a try if, if you uh, didn't have a pleasant experience before. It is under new management, nice young man that's running it. and. Um, so we'd like to help him as well. Uh, I've been working with fire prevention. As you know, they've moved over into the annex where I'm at, um, and they're helping complete the commercial retail database for the city. So there were a few locations that I was, I couldn't get the um, information I needed either from county records, and believe it or not, a lot of these store owners do not know the square footage their shops are in or details like that, and fire prevention with their programs and their CAD program and software that's actually helping me complete my databases for the city, which will then give us um, occupancy per, um, percentages, vacancy rates, and notice of available property. So when potential businesses want to move in, I can offer them, here's the locations that we have available. Um, I've continued working with Patrick. We're going to um, continue through the year working on um, the zone, updating our zoning code, um, as well as the policy for the storefront improvement program. 
And then, um, as you know, as I, I had emailed council earlier about Ellie's closing, and although they have closed, a new business has already um, indicated there that they will be taking over the space. They've actually started um, taking out, removing Ellie's old equipment. Um, it's going to be a vegetarian pizza place. Uh, they will be completing um, ren interior renovations. They'll be pulling their permits, uh, doing their build out. So um, I will report back to council when I have a better idea of their opening date, but I can assure you they are anxious to get in there and, and uh, uh, do their renovations and open as soon as possible. And um, yeah, that's a that's a kosher vegetarian pizza place. Yeah, it will right? be a kosher vegetarian yeah. pizza place. That's what I yes. understand is what's being planned. Okay, correct. Yes. Okay. I'm sorry I interrupted you. No, then, no, that's fine. Yeah. Okay. Uh, does anybody have any questions for Susan Drucker? I do have a question. Mr. Sims. Just because um, we had a party here earlier this evening who um, had some concerns about uh, the viability of his building and mm -hmm. his business. Mm -hmm. Are you working with them or will you be working with them? Yes, I've been with, um, I've worked with their um, uh, retail, their broker over there. Actually, I've uh, sent a couple leads over um, when people are in looking for certain square footage of um, uh, space. Um, they actually, they have, they're supposed to be giving me some additional information about square footage of some of their uh, units over there. And, uh, but yes, I've met with uh, Mr. Wasserstein um, not his partner who is here, but a third partner, Michael Mintz, we've had a couple meetings. So I've, I've met with them probably three times with them and then also their retail broker separately. Great. So yes, we've been aware. I would be um, interested in your um, insights and opinions regarding some of the things that were requested as well. Um, I would think that that would be an appropriate area for the economic development director to um, sort of assist in um, and, you know, help council understand uh, if there are any economic um, ramifications and what they might be, uh, especially around is it a good idea about the signage and the monument sign and it, will it help or will it hurt or, uh, you know, just any of the various things that were discussed. This is the first time I've ever heard of it. Um, and I know he was referring to things that happened 15 years ago as if they happened yesterday. So I just want to make sure that we're sort of working, you know, to facilitate, do whatever we can do. Right. Well, I, I will tell you just from um, a, a few different business owners around the community, there has been an expressed interest in digital signage. Um, that is one of the areas Patrick and I were looking at. Um, as we address the, we're going to focus on the commercial areas first and then with any cross-reference sections of the zoning code. But the, I will tell you that's come from a, a, a few different business owners asking about digital signage. So that it would be something I would encourage council to take a look at again. Um, mm -hmm. in, our, in our sign ordinance, it's, it, it's, very, it's vague. And so we it definitely, we, we do have some room for improvement there. Okay. Um, as far as the monument sign, that's University Square property. I would suggest not doing anything um, because we're working with um, University Square and, and possibly redeveloping that. And I feel confident that we can come, that, that something will be achieved over there. So I don't think we're in any position to touch their sign. Um, and as far as for the road off of Miramar, I had explained to Mr. Wasserstein that when, when you want to do that or digital sign, the best way to do it is to come with a plan go to the appropriate committee, start and go through the process to, so that we can give him direction because uh, I'm, I'm willing to sit down with people when they have ideas, but then the right. next step is to actually do a plan and come forward. So, right. Um, okay. Thank you. Sure. Right. And, and at the same time, uh, I, I also understand, you know, a, a, a person's reticence in, in, in investing much in drawings if, if, if they know they're not going to be well received. So I appreciate the fact that he came to us, that he's come to you, that he came before this council to, to speak about a few things that, that he has ideas about. And, and um, I happen to think there, may, there ought to be a place in our zoning for digital signage, that, that, that that's something that we can move towards. And as far as what we do with Miramar, um, there are a number of competing things we have to you know, consider. Uh, the school continues to be open at least through the end of this school year. Uh, we don't know as of yet what will happen at that site after the conclusion of the school year. And uh, 
part of any safety concern we may have with opening up a driveway onto Miramar right across from Wiley would be what will the role of Wiley be uh, after the end of May of this year. So, but at the same time, there's nothing that's actually been drawn yet. So uh, I got a feeling he's not, we're, I got a feeling we won't be breaking ground a new entrance before May. Correct. Yes. Right, and, and when you're talking about adding a new entryway somewhere too, you're talking about possibly getting into a traffic study, what sure. impact would that have? Mm -hmm. Um, so I, I think the next step, and I and I the plan is for me then to follow up with them. I knew they were coming here, and mm -hmm. um, I, I did let the, the mayor know that they were going to be. They wanted to address some concerns, but the next step would be to submit a plan if they actually want to move forward with that, and then we can go through the process that way. Okay, very good. Any further questions for Mrs. Strucker or comments on these issues? All right. Thank you. Well, Thank you, Mrs. Drucker. Next is housing and community development, Mr. Grogan Myers. Thank you, Mayor. Um, actually, uh, Susan's helping me set up for part of my director's uh, report here. So um, I have four brief updates for you. Two of them are kind of a, a look back and two are kind of a look forward here. So it's um, in two parts. So the, the first part is, um, the, the housing department um, staff are working on document cleanup and organization of the 2018 records, um, closing out any open permits, things of that nature, or um, inspections, excuse me. And um, we are currently working on an annual report um, to be able to provide to council, to the mayor, and to the community, um, just as a, a brief understanding of what we've been doing in our, our brief existence, but also um, our plans for the future. Um, and we were also emailed a Heritage Home Program end of the year report, which will, I will also forward on to council. Um, but just briefly, um, the Heritage Home Program, which is a program of the Cleveland Restoration Society, um, works with our homeowners here um, who are looking to invest in projects in their homes um, and, and get some technical assistance with their projects. Um, they spent a combined 169 hours on inquiries, site visits, and technical assists. They signed three loans this year um, compared to four loans last year. Um, three of those four loans from last year are still in progress. Uh, the projects are still in progress. And one was completed in 2018 that was uh, signed in 2017, and that's on Washington Boulevard. Um, so the, the value of those um, loans is a little over $116,000, and that represents improvements in um, you know, any, any various aspects of the home. Um, one of the, the examples they gave was a home that uh, was investing in two complete bathroom remodels, exterior masonry work, new gutters, a new flat roof off the back of their home. Um, so just some uh, great investment going on in the community, at least through the Heritage Home Program. Um, looking forward to 2019, um, we have our first grant of the year, uh, and that is the Community Recycling Awareness Grant through the Cuyahoga County Solid Waste District. You may recall last year, probably about this time, um, we were preparing to send out a postcard to the community helping to um, identify what are some of the recyclables you can put in um, to the, the recycling cans um, and what are some of the common things that you might think you can but you actually can't. For example, the clamshells or the, the berry holders you commonly get. A lot of people think you can put those in recycling but you actually can't. Um, so we are working uh, through that grant to provide a similar material. We're thinking maybe a, a refrigerator magnet this year. On, on a postcard, just maybe something a little bit more permanent than a postcard. Um, so I will keep you updated on that. Um, and um, thank you to Susan um, for getting us set up. So um, a couple weeks ago, I had introduced that the city was looking at GIS vendors. Um, and we have selected one. Um, it is one of the leaders in the industry through um, Esri Arc GIS. And one of the first projects our planning intern Brendan has been working on is something um, to be included on a digital welcome pack for new homeowners, and that's to help them identify what their uh, trash day is. So I'll just step over and help show you uh, what's, what we've been working on. Um, 
so this is a beta version, so we will be tweaking some of the bugs in the system um, and just you know, making sure all the information is accurate. Um, but this will be on the city's website under the new residence page. Um, and it'll come up with a screen um, that gives a little bit of guidance. So it asks, please type in your street name, uh, street number and name to find out what day your trash is collected. And it does say, please know trash collection will be one day behind for those whose trash day falls on or after a federal holiday. We'll provide a little bit more detail um, in terms of what are the federal holidays um, that trash collection will be completed. But, and I didn't choose these addresses for any other reason than they were random. Um, but, so this is what we'll see is a, a map of the city with um, the trash collection map in four different colors, uh, denoting the different days of the week. But let's try 4361 Groveland. So it'll zoom into their property. Um, it'll give them a pop-up box which has um, their address, and then just above it has the trash day. So it says Monday. So it's um, just a, a really quick and simple way. Uh, several communities in the county are working on GIS systems, um, but this is just the start. Or I just want to provide an introduction to some of the capacity that a GIS program has. Um, in other communities, school districts are using it to allow people to enter their home address <coughs> to say what their local elementary school might be, or high school, or something of that nature. Um, so this is one of the many capacities we can use. Um, this is a very simple version of just identifying what your trash day is. Um, but externally, it can help community members understand, uh, you know, it, it can pop up all the council representatives mm -hmm. and contact information, help them understand who the represent representatives are. Um, trash days, many different things um, which will, uh, you know, to, for the community, but internally can also help us understand where we can map where fire hydrants are. Um, or uh, a common example that um, a lot of communities give is we can actually um, put in where water access in the road is so that when it's, you know, midnight in a blizzard in January, you can know exactly where that water access is for that burst pipe a few hundred feet down as opposed to having to search the streets for it in the middle of that blizzard. So like I said, this is just an introduction. Um, just wanted to show you what we've been working on, testing the system, um, and understanding how we can put it into use for the residents here in the city. Okay. Very good. Thank you, Mr. Grogan Myers. Does anybody have any questions for Mr. Grogan Myers? I do. Mr. Sims. Um, some time ago, council in, uh, instituted a uh, program where when you make residential investments, uh, you receive, um, I got uh, the easiest way to say it, you receive like a tax benefit. Um, what's, first of all, what is the name of that program again? And secondly, where does it stand? And if there is a physical application, where do you receive it? Yeah, I'll send that over to the um, So it is, um, called the Community Reinvestment Area, the area. Um, or the CRA okay. Okay. Uh, program. And um, I just completed a frequently asked questions document um, that I, with the help of the law director, we reviewed, make sure for accuracy and, and have ready. Um, we also prepared a draft application um, that my understanding is the building commissioner and the law director have been working together on. Um, so there's a little bit of a, um, administratively, um, it works for housing. Um, you know, housing investment, but um, it requires the proper permit, uh, permitting and um, approval of the building department. Um, the building commissioner is the named housing officer for the CRA program. So actually the um, application is made with the building department. And that ensures compliance with all local ordinances, permitting, and then that the final inspection has been performed. So um, I can't say where the application stands. Um, the law director might be able to shed more light on that. But yeah, I, I thought I had provided comments on that, but we'll, we can get that up and ready. Um, okay. I have a uh, follow-up question. Yeah. Because it was my understanding that there was something that was um, a step that we had to take um, under state law before we could fully implement it, and that and once the date that council passed the legislation, that any resident that made investments from that point would be eligible, uh, their investments would be eligible for consideration. And I just wanna make sure that that's still true. And how does that fit with the idea 
that um, there may that going forward there may be some uh, permitting requirements or whatever you know because this program hasn't been formalized and there are individuals including myself who have made major investments in their property since this legislation was passed and so I want to know whether those investments will be qualified or not so uh, yes the answer is yes um, any investment that occurred um, from the date of the passage of the ordinance is one which um, you can submit an application for um, and then we would review you know whether um, whether it met the requirements and, and in particular there's a dollar amount of investment and then um, a dollar amount of increased valuation that's necessary um, for abatement to apply. Right. That's the word I was trying to think. Um, yeah. And secondly, from an administrative standpoint, the, the CRA, the Community Reinvestment Area, has been approved by the Ohio Development Services Agency. Um, that's a state agency, so it does exist. Um, there is no additional administrative hoop that we need to jump through. We have a CRA. And um, I guess as soon as we finalize our application, we can start um, receiving and considering applications. Okay. Well, I would just encourage that we finalize it as quickly as we can. Mm -hmm. uh, in particular, uh, Councilwoman Weiss put a lot of effort and had a lot of excitement around this idea and did a lot of convincing that it would be in the benefit of the interest of the city in order to, uh, you know, do it and... Um, help our residents along and so um, I kind of believe I was convinced that it was a great idea and so I would like to see it in effect and so that our residents are aware of any conditions that exist um, because right now I couldn't tell you what they are yes and, and that's part of the, also the reason why I've been helping out with the frequently asked questions because there is a lot of just kind of where do I qualify, how do I apply, how do I qualify type questions that are completely understandable, especially for those not working kind of in the day-to-day the -day local government area. So um, we've definitely try, been try to, we've tried to be mindful of those very questions and make sure that we're making it hopefully as user-friendly as we can. And then get the word out. And yes. Do we have like a program brochure or anything um, or that's in development? In development. Thank you. Yes. Very good. Thank you, Mr. Sims. Thank you, Mr. Groven Myers. Any further questions or comments with regard to Mr. Groven Myers' report? Very good. Thank you, Mr. Groven Myers. We now move to Standing Committees of Council. First, building Chairman Mark Weiser. Yes, thank you, Mr. Mayor. Um, we have to have a meeting about chickens. If you remember that uh, during the uh, previous meetings about chickens, it may have been meeting eight or meeting 10, I'm not sure, but we pledged to have a separate meeting to discuss how the chickens were going at the 12 month period. So I believe that's gonna be sometime in February. So clean your palates and watch your calendars. <laughs> we'll get here and, and talk. I, 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 I think there may be like one or two permits open in the city for, for live chickens. Mm -hmm. I believe two at this time. Two. Mm. All right. So maybe it'll be a short meeting. Who knows? Thank you, Mr. Mayor. I could tell you I live next door to chickens. I became aware like six months ago that they were living there. I don't know they're living there. I don't hear them. I don't smell them. I don't see them. I don't suppose this could qualify as the chicken meeting. Nope. No but, report. No. In but, case I can't make right. it, that's my call. Sometime in February. Very good. Thank you, Mr. Wiseman. Will so, Cooper be there? <laughs> yes. Cooper and all of his siblings would be there. Yeah. Yes. Yes. <laughs> Uh, Mr. Cook, can Cooper be there? Yes. Okay. All right. All right. We'll make sure Cooper is there. <laughs> All right. Um, civic information. Uh, Pamela Cameron. Councilman Cameron. Oh, oh boy. Um, I would like to go last, if that would be okay. All right. Uh, I, I don't see why not. All right. Uh, finance. Uh, Susan Party. Mrs. Party. Thank you, Mayor. We have budget meetings scheduled. Um, as you reported earlier, 
Our finance director has had surgery and is still recovering. So he requested that the meetings be set back a little later in January. We're starting January 31st at 7 p.m. That's a Thursday night. Following meetings are February 7th and February 14th. If we need a third meeting, we actually met November 7th, so that would be a fourth meeting. The meetings will be held in the annex, so if you haven't yet visited the annex, this will be a good time to get to see it. That's 2245 Warrensville, I believe. Yes, that is correct. Okay. Um, the and advisory will join us. We have at least one new member of the advisory, and that takes our number to 10 for finance advisory. So we're looking forward to getting that done, having the discussion, and putting this to bed. Very Thank good. You. Very good. Thank you, Mrs. Purdy. Uh, governmental Affairs, Mrs. Weiss. I know Mrs. Weiss had another engagement this evening. Does anybody have uh, a report on behalf of Governmental Affairs? Okay. Uh, seeing none, we'll <coughs> move on. Uh, recreation, um, uh, Philip Ertl. Mr. Ertl? Yes, I uh, am uh, interested to start uh, uh, investigating an ice rink, I think that'd be a, a great addition. You know, we've got decent um, recreational activities during the warmer months, but it'd be great to get something going uh, this time of year. So that's uh, that's interesting. Uh, and also uh, the parade go along. Uh, that, uh, it's amazing how that kicks off right around the first of the year until the end of May. But. Uh, so that's happening too, and also we'll be looking at some of the other things that go on at the pool. Uh, we have to start looking at the menus and things like that, passes and all of that. So yeah, that'll be coming along. That's it. Excellent. All right. Thank you, Mr. Ertl. Safety, Mr. Rock. No report, Mayor. Okay. Uh, service and utilities, Mr. Sims. No report. Okay. Uh, Committee of the Whole. No report, Mayor. Okay. Mrs. Cameron, civic okay. information. As it relates to civic affairs, I do not have anything specific to report, although I will be checking with the council clerk to find out about a date for, um, uh, we had a, a, an issue that was referred back to committee, so we may need to discuss a date. Is that the uh, move to amend bill? Exactly. Okay. Thank you. Beyond that, I do have some comments I want to bring forward that I've delayed for quite some time. Could you speak up a little into the microphone? So I know some of our have difficulty is hearing this, you. Is this better? Yes. Okay. Um, I have some comments that I've wanted to make for a while. Um, so I think I'll just go ahead and get started. It's been brought to my attention by quite a few people that people have found um, found me inadequate as a council person and that I have not I do not tend to meet the standards by which they've been set here in University Heights for council representation and I just wanted to comment on that. This was, this all came about because I participate somewhat in social media. And as everybody knows with social media, it never dies, it never goes away. So whatever it is you do on social media, it always will follow you, which is not really too much of an issue for me, mainly because I am, I've always believed in America's constitutional version of I have a right to say whatever I choose to say and I just kind of thought that was how the world worked. But apparently, there are some people who would take exception to that. So, I want to, 
I want to say that as a council person, there is no expectation for a role that I have or that any of my colleagues would have. There is no expectation other than they are voted here by their peers and fellow citizens to re represent the folks that we serve to the best of our ability. That is the beginning and the end of it. Now, what I may do individually does not link me to any of my peers professionally. It just doesn't. My behavior is mine alone. It's not a referendum of anything that council would do as a group or anything that any other individual would do. I wanted to also make sure that everybody understood that I recognize that I share one seventh of the privilege of being on council. And that it's 100% of the responsibility, but that's what I signed up for, so I'm okay with that. And I urge anyone who dislikes my service to council to mount a campaign, form a committee, mount a campaign, and set about becoming a member of council so that you can display the preferred behavior to which you would hold me accountable. Now, this all started because on social media, as does happen, people start talking about what their issue is of the day and because of the leaves this year and the leaves proclivity to bury the grass, some people were complaining about what are they going to do because the leaves have, might smother their grass. And one gentleman asked of the people that were in this, following this thread, he asked, well, what can I do? And I made a comment that involved the word pee. Told him to pee on it. Now, I didn't know that saying the word pee was going to start a whole lot of drama, but it did. So since it did, let me just describe for you some of the hell that I've been put through. Because I told the man to pee on the spot on his grass that was browned up because of the leaves. First of all, the first thing I learned was that I have a handler. I didn't know this before I said, told a man to pee on the spot. But apparently I have a handler whose job it is to monitor my social activity and to report out to various people about issues that may affect my future and my political life. And this individual sees it as her duty to help me by urging other people involved in social media to restrict comments by others, to clean up anything that I might say, or to restrict someone else's comments in response to something that I might say. So I would just want to make sure this individual understands that they are currently fired. There is no one responsible for my comments but myself. All I tried to do was to tell the gentleman in as shorthand as possible what he could do to remedy what he said was his situation. And because it caused such a fervor, I went back and reread the comment 
and I provided him with a website that he could go to so that he could learn why it is I made the comment that I made. There is a website called permies.com and one of the contributors to permies.com, Mr. Joel Hollingsworth, stated that urine on grass provides a soluble nitrogen format of which the bacteria creates rich organic matter, provides proteins, improves the pH level, and as a consequence, male urine also scares deer away. <laughs> that was the point at which I wanted the gentleman to become aware because I had heard it, read it, whatever. And that was the only point that, to which I wanted to make. But because it included what people would consider inappropriate language, it became a thing. Now, the thing that then happened was that one of my only, as I understand it, political enemy got her friends and family involved and caused quite a bit of ruckus and started calling the mayor and other people saying, why is this inappropriate individual on council and considering whatever else that they could do to raise some havoc about the word P. Now, I know this all because of the responses from some of the people that have been involved with this. And the mayor's one who felt put out that he had to make responses because I made the P comment. Now, I've seen the mayor's grass. <laughs> and I've seen the person who acted as my handler in this situation. I've seen her grass, too. And I could think of a little bit of nitrogen wouldn't help, could help possibly help their situations. So however it should happen, I would really hope that the mayor would consider putting a little soluble nitrogen and fertilize his grass. And then the next part of the hell that got raised by this was because my enemy decided that she would include her children in this fiasco. I don't think that I want to say anyone's name in reference to this part, but I really would have to ask the individual's daughters, you really you really want to fight with me? Do you really want to do that? You don't, you can't think of anything as young women, you can't think of anything else to do than to take up your mother's political battles. Surely you've known her your entire life. And this is not the first time to which she's created an uproar or some kind of upset. So I would hope that they would review their situation, find themselves something constructive to participate in, and leave me out of the equation. But in case they choose to continue, then I would want them to be aware that number one, I am capable of fighting I'm very capable. 
and you've already made a classic mistake in responding to something to which you had very limited information, and you made a comment to which I find disgusting and actionable. So, I'm just saying to the daughters, you need to watch yourself before you get yourself into something you can't get out of easily. And then to your mother, whom I understand has intentions to run for office, I will see her in November. Now, the reason that this individual has become my enemy is because she feels that I made an inappropriate comment towards her. And I did, but I think I need to give some context. I made this comment towards this woman the day before election day last year. And at that time, we all experienced the worst day of our political lives to that point. We had all just experienced our then mayor making the most outrageous, inappropriate comments that could have been made to anyone. Mm -hmm. And and I was in pain. Uh, Mr. Sims, you're raising to a point of order? Yes. Yes. What is your point, sir? Well, um, I appreciate the uh, concern and the comments that the councilwoman has. Um, and I think that um, at this point, her point has been um, effectively communicated. And I think that we um, should uh, move the agenda. Okay. <clears throat> All right. Uh, Mrs. Cameron, I, I, I know that these comments are, are heartfelt and important to you. Um, I know that we're also in the portion of the meeting where we have reports from standing committees. Uh, and obviously, in deference to the situation, I have not called you to order in any way up to this point, but Mr. Sims does raise a point. Are, are you in a position where you could wrap up your comments? No, I'm not. I'm going to finish my comments. I will be further brief. But I am going to finish what I started to say. But last year when the Mayor Enfell made the comments that she made, she devastated me and a lot of other people. And as I sat there, and I listened to her horrendous comments and the blame that she assigned to us all. All I can tell you all is that I was in pain and I was really hurt by what she said. And it was at that point that her friend took it upon herself to come approach me and make some nasty comments towards me. And that's when I uttered an inappropriate word to her. But I'm sure her daughters were not made aware of this situation. But I am telling it today because I really feel like 
people need to understand why the comments that I made were taken out of context and why it was promulgated to others as to the mayor and to everyone else on social media that somehow I'm a problem or that somehow I don't meet the standard to be on council. So that's why this is all taking place. So, Mr. Sims, yes. I'm done now. Thank you. And I will yield back to the floor. Okay. Thank you, Mrs. Cameron. Well, this will conclude the, uh, with the conclusion of the reports of the standing committees. This concludes the regular portion of the meeting. We did have a motion for it to go into executive session following uh, this portion of the meeting. Uh, so accordingly, um, uh, this would conclude this portion. Were a motion to be made following the executive session, it's possible that if you were to stick around, you could come back and observe that. Uh, however, um, it, I would not be able to say at this point whether the only thing we wouldn't come back for would be a, a motion to adjourn. Um, but that is only my guess. I, I don't actually know if there'll be any other motions besides. So you're welcome to have a seat downstairs. Uh, or outside otherwise, uh, but this does conclude this portion of the meeting. Thank you for being here this evening, and if we don't see you, then have a good evening. Thank you. We'll recess briefly uh, to get ready for the executive session.